All right. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be here with, of course, Alison Renault. Again, we are doing an amazing um, panel on work in Christ. We're going to really talk about uh, projects that Alison is uh, either leading or participating in. Those are very interesting ones, and they're small, and they're big, and they're global, and um, the, the latest uh, story I'm following with great, great interest is, of course, the story of the satellites in Amazon forest, right, for the tribes. I think it's absolutely amazing. We're going to show you pictures, We're going to show you how those satellites already reaching the place and the tribes. And, of course, we're going to dive deep into how Allison is actually doing the work. Because I think doing the work in Christ is um is not it's it's a responsibility it's a it's a thrill it gives me chills immediately just to think about the the beauty of it and the excitement of it but at the same time you want to be and have grace in that place right for yourself and and um and take care of other people but also of yourself so I have all those very specific questions to Allison but we will begin with uh, introduction. Alison, pre please tell us about yourself. You have a remarkable story. <laughs> we'll see more about it on the, in the article as well. Well, I'm Alison Renault, mother of 11 biological children, all with one man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was a very devoted mother and actually was an only child. So this was, uh, it seems to me that God always hands me something to do that I have no prior knowledge of. And I sometimes think it's to keep, keep me humble, <laughs> to depend, dependent upon him. I certainly don't serve God because I'm perfect. In fact, that's the reason I do is because I'm so imperfect. I need something to lean on, you know, that's a lot bigger than I am. But I found myself after I had, um, you know, 10 kids, actually 11, um, the 11th one, I was really truly a, a broken housewife um, in my 40s, didn't feel like I was doing much with my life. Um, yes, I was a mother and I was excited about that. But there were a lot of things in my life that were crashing, hitting bottom. And um, I, I was uneducated. I really didn't have hardly any income. And it um, put me in a position where I couldn't really make an impact and give back to society like I wanted to. So I prayerfully began to seek a strategy of what I could do. And I, I think at 50 years old, when I decided to do this 48 to 50, you can't try just anything. I think you can in your 20s, maybe your 30s. But it, when you hit my age, you don't want to make, you, you really want to hit that divine plan the best you can, right? And uh, for me, it just was daily prayer, just asking God, please show me what I should do. And, you know, even though my life was in, in, in a lot of ways in shambles, um, God put the blame on me. I put in the blame on everyone else. And maybe I was a little bit right about that. But God said to me in my heart, not out loud, but, you know, you are where you are in life because of, of the decisions you've made. And it kind of helps you take your power back. Uh, like, okay, if I can get on the bottom, then maybe I can make a decision to, to level up and do more. So I realized that I needed to get my education. So I went back to school uh, at 48, got my bachelor's in about a year and a half in communications. And then I felt very compelled to get my master's degree at Harvard University. Um, I, I think there's so many times that God puts things in our heart that are literally impossible, like most of them, right? And this creates this relationship with him, this friendship, this dependence that um, leads us in a place we never dreamed we could be. I ended up getting a scholarship to, and for my master's there, and it flew me back and forth 3,000 miles a week. I uh, got all my classes on one day because I still had seven kids at home and was working at that point full time. Um, and I got a scholarship, paid my airfare, my tuition and my books. And I was the happiest uh, person on Harvard campus. I promise you, like every time I took a step on that campus, I thanked God. Um, I had friends that were 
supporting me and praying for me on every paper, every test, uh, because I just didn't feel qualified. And, you know, that, that those sort of, that's what a team is a big part of strategy um, that God puts around you to support you when you don't believe in yourself and ended up graduating with, graduating with a four point in 2016 uh, with my master's in international relations with a strong focus in our U.S. space program. And, uh, you know, this led to open doors into space, into the space industry. I worked at NASA headquarters for a little while in Washington, D.C. And, you know, just made a lot of great relationships. And it began to spin off where it became a business where I was doing international space consulting for emerging nations. And um, I'm just one thing led to another. And I just kept saying yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'm living a life now that I could have never imagined. Not everything in my life, again, is perfect, but I wake up every day thinking this is going to be the best day of my life. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So of course I'm hearing this story and, and I know even more about the details of how it happened, how the scholarship, for example, came around. And it's all sounds, I mean, like a miracle, right? When you uh -huh. listen to the story thinking, how is it possible? And the, so many people are wondering as well, <laughs> right? Like, like how, right? And um, so my first sort of chunk of this conversation I want to dedicate to this exact theme which is opportunities right so I feel like often we need to be at the right place at the right time right and that is a miracle when something just clicks everything just like a pieces of the puzzle get together and, and those opportunities get uh, realized right mm -hmm. but what it takes it takes somebody to be uh, you know, I think almost like put yourself out there, have faith, have confidence, even at the very, very beginning, even when you might not have confidence and you feel like an imposter and think it's not possible, but you still have to take that first step. And I think when you are with God, that is when it's the, the most, you know, it's, it's the easiest, right? When you're just by yourself, <laughs> trying to convince yourself or maybe even people tell you, you should do it. It's like, but when you end the, but it's time when you are embracing yourself as a child of God and understanding that this is a, this is bigger than me. It's not just about me. I am just a, I'm part of something so much bigger. Then it becomes easier to take that step. So I want you to take yourself back to that moment where you first made that decision whether it was about going to get your bachelor's, whether it was about going to Harvard and going on that train, on that, on that trip and, and on that plane and trying to get the, going to, for that interview that I, I know I read about. Um, what was going through your mind and what was on your heart and how did you come to that conviction that, yes, I'm going to do it. I, I have confidence. I need to be there. I had no choice. Okay. Uh, the, life, the life behind me was like, you know, a life I didn't want to go back to. And I really had no choice but forward. I know we hear of the story where some of the conquerors would come to certain, you know, new, new, new continents. And the leaders of these conquerors would burn their ships. So they could not get back on the ships and go home. And that's how I felt was like... God was burning the ships behind me and I had to go forward. I, I felt as desperate as anybody, as anyone when it comes to confidence. And, but I had a dream to do more with my life. And I knew I would have to just, you know, the fear never left. Uh, the courage just took over because of the dream to um, make an impact and want to, you know, not just, live and die in the same ad in the same same address the same zip code and yes i love where i live but um i think i mentioned this before but the great margaret thatcher prime minister of england said to her husband one time please please don't let me die just washing a teacup you know i didn't want to just die full in underwear and washing dishes <laughs> i thought there might be something more in there so i believe that you know preparation often uh, collides with opportunity and another thing is it's very very important to treat everyone you meet with the utmost respect 
I don't care if it's a taxi driver, the person who carries in your luggage into the hotel or, or anyone, um, because those relationships, whether we consider high or low, often lead to um, the opportunities that are placed before you. And I can say that a lot of my miracles came from helping someone that was very small who was connected to somebody very big that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. But but that tells uh, more about you yourself as a as a as a person, right? It's just always if you're always in that space where you would help somebody, right? And you don't know where it's going to lead. But in in your case, it's led to some really great things. I want to emphasize something. I'm right in the middle of writing a book, and one of the chapters is about three signs that God is speaking with you. And what you just mentioned is exactly that. There's one when you're, something is crumbling. Like <laughs> exactly what you said. Like, I, I can't go back to that, right? Like, that this is it. Like, I only have to go forward, right? But this is the sign that God gives us. Because often we think, this is, I didn't do it. It's, it's out of my control. Some things are happening in life that, you know, seemingly are like out of blue. It's a crisis or drama or losses. And you just... Okay, but that's a sign because it, it is a divine situation where you now are cool to for your next step. The second one is yes. it puts it puts a dream in you. You like you said, suddenly you you see something. Oh, I could do that. It, it's it, it's a dream. It's it's big, but it's why did it why did it come to you? Well, it came to you because God put it there, right? It's it's He's calling you. And the third one you also mentioned, of course, it, it, it's uh, in my book as well, is fear. And then you have this fear. And uh, I remember when I was investigating first time about, you know, our God speaking with us and then having fear. It's when Mary, I think when Gabriel, Angel Gabriel, Archangel Gabriel came and gave her message, first she felt was fear. <laughs> and every time, every time, God comes and speaks and gives you something. First, we feel it's this fear. It's this terrifying sort of fear that's going to either stop us or tell us you have to do it. You see how big it is. You mm -hmm. see how big it is. And you are trusted with this vision. You have to go and you have to do it. And of course, you mentioned all of those three stages. And I'm thinking, yeah, it, it is a, it's, it's your divine path and, and you took it and so now let's explore this next theme which is I'm thinking always and praying as well please God let your will be done not mine mm -hmm. because just like you until I was 50 I was implementing my will I knew what I want to do I was putting all my things in this one basket, me. <laughs> I, and I reached my limitations. So I, I was like, well, okay, this is what I can do. But that's it. Yes. So my, and this is when, for me, coming to Jesus was just so normal. Because, of course, what else what, what I'm going to do? Because otherwise, I'm just going to go down, down, spiral down from what I've already achieved. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, no. Let God now take charge and do something with me. So I want you to explore that and tell us about, especially the strategy, because I know that you are like that as well. You, you given yourself to God, you said, take me, <laughs> use me, I, and I'm here for you. So when you are stepping into that unknown, even when you're helping people, you seemingly out of blue and you don't know where that's going to lead and then they are somehow connected and they bringing you those big opportunities so but you don't know that when you are in the moment right when you're just taking doing those little things right seemingly insignificant right so how do we plan for the unknown that god had prepared for us so he has a plan for you but how do you handle that in your own life? How do you, do you have a strategy? Do you, um, do you have goals? Do you, like, how do you um, manage that whole 
I, th I feel like the situation where you're stepping into something and you don't know where it's going to lead. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, we're Christians, but anyone that serves God in any religion will tell you that, um, you know, they feel that way, as you said, stepping into the unknown. But that's what faith is. Yeah. Faith is trusting in something you can't see, you can't hear, you don't have the uh, the exact, you know, it would be really nice if God would appear in, in front of you and, and just write it all out for you on a piece of paper or like he did with Moses. <laughs> it's it's not like that. It's like a scavenger hunt, you know, it's it's a constant seeking and trying and, and bumping around and, and then you get clarity and you step a little farther forward and suddenly and more doors open. But I I've been studying a little bit Michelangelo, and we all know that he was in the 1400s, and he was a great sculptor, uh, painter, poet, even an architect, and painted some of the amazing uh, paintings in the Vatican, which, by the way, I've seen in person, and it's unbelievable. And, you know, when he was asked, how did he create these beautiful statues? He said, I saw the angel in the marble and I carved until I set it free oh. and I feel like when God gives me an idea it's like that it's a big chunk of marble and I can see the picture of what he wants to do but then the tedious sculpting begins to get down to the four and the answer and the, the finish line and it's hard like marble is hard right chipping away at it and I just keep doing it until I've set the vision free and, and along when you set, when you do, I really believe partner with God, you set people free. And when you set people free, you set yourself free. I mean, I think we all have wounds. We've all had betrayals. We've all had hurts. We've all had depression. But for me, as I serve humanity, um, I find myself getting happier and more whole and, and well. And, and again, as we talked the other day, there's really no pill you can take to, to heal a broken heart or, or, you know, the betrayal of a friend, close friend or something like that. But I think through, through God, um, as we help others, uh, we were set free. And I try to think of myself as a compassionate entrepreneur. I don't, my drive isn't, isn't the, isn't the income, although we should be in business to make money. That's why we do business. But for me, it's the, it's the human side of it. Can I, take this gift and this skill that God has given me that's helping me have income and combine it with setting people free and, and elevating other people with it. So I find every day when I wake up, I do multiple jobs. I have multiple uh, business I do. I, I'm excited about each and every one because in each business, I've got this picture in my mind of what this business can do to make an impact mm -hmm. in a different area. So uh, I haven't, I really haven't worked a single day in my life. Even when I was going back to school and trying to juggle children and work and, and, and homework at a high level, um, I, I was excited. I knew um, that this was the, the strategy God was going to use to impact the, the rest of the world. So I didn't feel, over, I mean, I felt well, not a confidence, but I felt, you know, I'm, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to do this with God. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm getting out of this is like, number one is letting, it's like when you are such a beautiful metaphor, right? It's uh, sculpting something out of marble, right? It's it's not so that you're adding anything, but you're actually chipping, chipping, away. Away, chipping away all those things. And it's like a metaphor maybe for our, you know, past wounds or, or losses or, or in, you know, what mm -hmm. are they? Failures, we assume, well, those were failures, those were mistakes, mm -hmm. right? Guilt, shames, like about all of us, like doubts, right? And you're just chipping it away until you are creating what, uh, what, is, what is there already, right? It's God is already given you, like, the, this is the angel, right? And then, on the other hand, when you are, another th thing I got from this is that the skills, you mentioned the skills, is that, oh, really the question i'm asking myself what kind of skills god has given me it's like that angel it's like when you chip away all this the pain and all the doubts you're really there with gifts with talents with skills 
right? This is what you have after living your life. And now how do you put that to use? And then the third one, big one as well, is what's the intention behind what you're doing, right? Because yes, it is a business, but at the same time, I think good business serves people. It does something very, very useful. And the more useful it is, the more successful it is. So, so that is like the big third one. And you can ask yourself right now, whoever is in that place where they want to identify, am I doing the, the am I working on my calling or am I just maybe lost myself somewhere in pursuit of happiness and, and success and achievements and, and recognition and all of those things that we feel we, we must have, right? Especially when we didn't chip away all the wounds, right? It feels so necessary to have that external validation, right? At any cost. And then when you're asking yourself, so what, do, what am I doing with my skills? What am I, what am I doing if, I, if I'm not in pain? If I don't have that urgency to get this pat on the back from people, right? And get this badge, I call it badge of suffering or badge of honor, you know, whatever the badge you want from people. It's, like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not it, right? But how do you use your talents, your skills, your drive? This is, I think, the one that takes you to the place where now you can apply yourself and do something useful. And that is uh, the essence of your work and the essence of your business. Well, I think I prayed a prayer about 15 years ago that God would give me the jobs that nobody else wanted mm -hmm. or give me people that nobody else wanted to reach. Uh, and I feel like I, I don't, I don't feel like sometimes I have a lot of skills. I just am available yeah. and um, I feel like he's on a lot of the assignments that I feel like heaven has given me. I think he's tapped other people on the shoulder first, many. And then he finally says, well, we've got an unqualified girl in Oklahoma who's got 11 kids. She doesn't, doesn't have much talent, but she will say yes. <laughs> and <laughs> Sometimes I think that's why some of these projects fall in my lap. And to confirm that, a lot of times uh, the people that reach out to me for help, whether it be Afghans or, or whether it be these uh, people in the Amazon rainforest or, or just different people will say, we've asked so many other people, but no one would help us. So I am sure that in God's eyes, I'm at the bottom of the food chain uh, as far as someone he would like to choose. And, but Isaiah 6 uh, I love this verse where Isaiah heard the, the voice of the Lord. And he said he heard a voice saying from heaven, whom shall we send and who will go for us? And Isaiah said, here I am, send me. And this has really been my, my theme is, you know, if nobody else will go, well, just send me. Because I just want to, I'm, I'm 50, I'll do anything, you know. I'll do anything for you. I don't have a time. Just give me something to do. Even if it's the, you know, the crumbs that fall from the master's table, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> I'm there for you. And um, so I, and I, and I may have mentioned this on our podcast in the past, but when I was making those thoughts about 15 years ago, I watched the movie with Jim Carrey called Yes Man. Mm -hmm. And he was a guy who wouldn't say yes to anything. And he was living a miserable life. And then one day he decided after a conference that he was going to say yes to everything and it absolutely revolutionized his life. So that's what I try to do is just be a yes person with people and with God to the best of my ability. We can't do everything, but we can do our part. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Th that's so big guys. So think about, I think the things maybe you, you have in your mind, like it, it's in your heart. Right, the vision is there. Mm -hmm. Things you're really afraid to do. Take a, take account of it. Write it down. Do some journaling around that. So, what is there that is asking to be realized right now? And then say yes to it. So now, the next big question, and I'm asking you for advice here for people. So, when they did say yes to it, so now what? Because now the big work begins. So. 
I had this idea that um, in this, that's something that um, I feel about you. I feel that about people I meet who are doing work in Christ. I feel that how it's changing me as I am stepping into this, in, into my path, doing the work is that God is giving you authority. Is that suddenly you have this energy. You, you, you said yes, and I think you have this flood of energy. You just really excitement. You really, the fire, you want to do it. And now you have means, right? Because internally, sometimes we can be burnt out. You know, we could be like what you mentioned, you described your life before this, right? It's like, that's it. Like, I'm, I'm done. It, it's just all bad. <laughs> it's crushing. Like, where do I get the energy even to, to begin this big work? And suddenly when you've done your, you said your yes, and you began, and suddenly you have now the, the drive and the energy comes, right? So my question to you is, so how do you personally manage your time? How do you take care of yourself in the process of doing this work? Because maintaining that drive, motivation, and energy level that will allow you to do all of those things. And we're going to go and right now, after this, look into the projects that you're working on and how much energy it takes. I'm just like, <laughs> like amazed at how much you, you are already doing just physically. And I know you're pl planning a big trip. So it's going to be, like that takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. So how do you maintain the level of excitement about your work? How do you take care of yourself? So give us some tips and of course, your own practices. Well, for me, the magic is in the morning routine. Okay. And I think we all wake up feeling like sleepy, tired. We don't want to get out of bed. I mean, <laughs> I don't think anybody comes leaping out of bed. <laughs> Maybe somebody does, but that's not me. So I have to have a morning routine. And by the way, I love talking with you because you address the whole person and it's, it's, you're an amazing, amazing woman really to bring to the front, all the, the real stuff, the real things that we, that the hard, the hard part of life. And I really appreciate that. But you know, for me, I have to wake up first thing in the morning and I have to inspire myself. I don't care if I'm looking at a motivational video, a podcast, reading the Bible, uh, you know, and, and, and praying. I need some, I need this little battery charged in the heart because it, it's, it's worn down from the night before <laughs> and the day before. So it has to be recharged. That invisible part of us has to be charged. And then I go into the kitchen and I drink uh, a vitamin energy drink. A healthy one and i put on my running shoes rain or shine no matter where the weather or where, where i am in the world and i go for at least a two mile run and do i feel like everything i'm telling you i usually don't feel like doing but by the time i finish up that run i have cleared my brain cleared my my body uh i feel uh motivated to do life i feel excited when I return and, and, and I write, and when I return, I write down the list of the things that I need to get done. And then I do it. Um, and it may sound like I'm a machine and I feel like doing it all every day, but I don't, but I will say that as you talked about the idea, the idea that comes from heaven, that epiphany about, you know, a project or something that we want to do, and, you know, there's a variety of things there that we can see in our heart that nobody else can see that we want to do. There is that surge of energy and that belief and that enthusiasm and that fire down inside to do it. And you really need that. And you have to have it because every dream, you can have an obstacle. Every dream has obstacles along the way. And uh, that passion for me has has just uh, mowed down those obstacles and gone past them and not really worn me down. And I've learned though, if I lose that energy, I know where to go to get it back. Um, I either uh, talk to a friend, uh, I'll, I'll watch a movie, I'll do something that reignites, watch a movie about that subject or something that reignites my passion. I mean, you, you have to, it's not like, you know, I'm not a robot by any means, but, uh, there are 24 hours in a day and every human being gets that 24 hours. We know eight hours is going to be, I get eight hours of sleep period. Okay. I do not function well on seven or six. Some people can, 
I just don't. Plus, I want to live a long time. <laughs> and uh, so I get so you get you use your eight hours of sleep, right? And let's say you spend um, two and a half hours a day, two out two and a half hour, two hours a day eating, maybe. Okay, it could be cookie eating two and a half. And then now I would say we're at eleven hours. And maybe for me, I spend thirty minutes uh, working out and you know running. Uh, by the time I run and put my shoes on, and if you and then if you work, that's another eight hours. Well, everybody everybody has the same amount of time to chop up. And if you write down where you're budgeting your time, you'd be amazed at how much time you have left over to do something and something extra and 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 add something to your life. And so that's the way I look at it is um, re re look at my time. And also, um, you know, I go hard at a project and then I rest and I go hard and I rest. I might go hard until two o'clock, take an hour nap, get back up and go again. Um, I, 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 I'm not, like I said, I don't, I can't operate on 24, seven, uh, seven days a week. Sundays, you'll find me laying in my bed reading a book most of the day. <laughs> uh, the body, the body is, needs rest. And I make sure that I, I get that as well. So I hope that's just a few tips. Uh, people should not feel guilty for resting. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we all need it. And we shouldn't feel guilty for taking a day to rest as well. If you're really tired and, been, you know, been traveling or, you know, working extra hard, uh, you have to have a downtime because your body will wear out. It is a machine. And doctors will tell you to, you know, even make sure you take a, a little 30 minute nap a day if you can or get playing asleep. It's not rocket science really is it <laughs> that's right I, I, it, it's actually in the bible too uh you know the god created world right and on the seventh day he rested right. <laughs> and, uh, I, it was so funny yesterday which was sunday i was because i'm in the middle of the project so i'm working hard right so yes. completely involved and then it's sunday and temptation of course is to work because I mean, why not i wake up early you know it's like 5 30 i'm like okay now i hit my <laughs> you know goals and um you know luckily i have a dog so i was like taking dog for a walk put in and i think it was sermon by, by somebody and it and she, first thing she's saying is oh and you need to take a rest god <laughs> worked and then he rested and i'm like that's oh. so good i was oh i suspected that i shouldn't be <laughs> working i have to take day off and then i i was like what a reminder so i think it's so important right because temptation is to be always busy yesterday i was talking with somebody uh oh was it the, uh, today's tuesday actually so <laughs> yesterday i was talking with somebody and we were talking about how sometimes i would drive to work and prove ourselves and have approval we think god is going to give us the the badge again we we think <laughs> in the worldly ways right work <laughs> this is why you're going to be a good person right and it's like it's, it's not about it right it's not about it at all and god loves us you know in every moment whether we are working or not working it doesn't matter we just want to work because because we're so in love right we, we're in love with god we want to give we want to do we want to give back right you see you mentioned that with give back right we want to contribute that's very different and therefore then we need to pace ourselves right so we can carry that authority that god gave us with grace and actually deliver on uh, on what on, on what the mission was right because when we burn down I think it's a sabotage of the bigger, <laughs> <laughs> right? If you just collapse and then you didn't do anything, <laughs> right? Then it's what a waste, right? Yes. So now let's talk about all the projects that you're working on. So at least a few, because it's it's a lot. But um, last time we talked about this amazing project about saving people from Afghanistan right? That was big one. So today I'd love to talk with you about project you are involved in right now and share some of the pictures as well from the project. So let's begin. Uh, I will let you speak and then put the uh, pictures when, when it's appropriate and I will share with you guys the screen and we'll look at the uh, really, really interesting 
insights into what Alison is doing in the world right now? Well, I feel fortunate to be asked to do it, but uh, the first picture when I'm talking here in a second will be the one of the chief with the words underneath the single, the single the man. So I been, have been, I'm on the board of directors for the Columbia Space Agency, Columbia, South America. Um, again, I work with emerging space nations. And one of the things that we've been working on was bringing internet to Columbia, South America through SpaceX. SpaceX has their Starlink uh, internet constellation that they've been working, you know, launching into space for years to make sure that remote parts of the earth can receive internet. And what, what an amazing, you know, project. And um, Columbia, South America has about 26% connectivity, last I knew, 26%. And, you know, a lot of those people can't be rescued medically, or if there's a 911 call, there is no address, no navigation, et cetera. Um, so this was, this was, this has been exciting. And I visited uh, my friends at, at start SpaceX because I have relationships in the space world and talk with the people that are running Starlink, which is their internet program, in person. I posted it on social media, this picture of me standing in front of the Starlink building and, you know, really thankful to be there. And some chief in the Amazon rainforest who was probably out in the city somewhere um, saw this picture, go to the one right, right there, stop. And he created a one minute video in his native language asking if I could bring, uh, Starlink internet to the Amazon rainforest. Now these are the primitive tribes that you, you can imagine in your mind where uh, they've never had contact with the outside world, et cetera. This is like National Geographic on steroids, which I, I love meeting new people. And uh, all of these chiefs have gotten together saying, you know, can you help us? And you can see a picture of all of them there. Um, and you know, I have to say most of the projects God gives me are underfunded. <laughs> All of them are. So where do you start? What do you do, right? And uh, they initially asked for 20, 20 tribes first. And, you know, why do they want internet? That's the question. And the, and the, and the reason they said, we need, we need you to help us. You'll be saving lives. We have no way to contact someone in a medical emergency. Uh, if there's a natural disaster, we can't even talk from one, one tribe to another. And we we want this for education for our children as well. So they had me there, right? The kids. Uh, is the picture of one of the children on there? Yes, there is. There is. We get, we're getting here. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? See that little one? Okay, that, that's where they get me, right? <laughs> for sure. Um, so uh, you can go back to right there, down to one more. One. Uh, no, the other way. So I, what I did was I, obviously the first thing I did is, okay, God, what am I going to do? Uh, what is the cost? I, I put it into, I, it's boots on the ground at that point. I bring it down to the earth. What is it going to cost per satellite, per tribe? Uh, so uh, it's about $680 is all per, per satellite dish delivered. And um, so I figured out times 20, how much money will that be? Okay, how am I going to raise that amount of money? And what am I going to do? And I kept, you know, praying about it for a month. Like, what am I going to do? Finally, on a morning run, God was like, you're, you're going to be the first one to donate. You're going to, you're going to donate the first chunk. <laughs> and when you get your skin in the game, I'll bring more people. And I'll tell you, once I did my part, it just sort of snowballed as far as, uh, I didn't have to ask. I just was showing some people some pictures and they're like, I'm giving a thousand. And I was like, I'm giving a thousand. I'm, uh, and I was like, this is this was unheard of as far as the, the donations. They saw the historic uh, picture here of, of what what we can do to really help these people and that, that want it. Uh, so they're all ordered. They're all on their way. Uh, as you can scroll down, you can see the first ones arrived uh, right there. And uh, it's you can scroll down one more and you can see where they're setting it up. Uh, and, well, on this this picture here. Uh, they're, they're setting it up there. You see the little one in the back, see the little, little boy or girl in my t-shirt, so cute. And, and then the picture, uh, uh, will back up. You can see it, it's up there in the trees and it works. So our, the prototype is working and 
Um, this will actually make 21 when, when the, the final ones are. Uh, I know they sent me pictures of some that are already arriving in the boxes. Um, and this is the best part of the whole project that makes me so happy because I love people and I love new cultures is I've been invited by all those chiefs in that top picture and that black and white picture to come and bring those bring those those uh, satellite dishes in person. And as you can imagine, it is a, you know, first a three hour ride by boat and then two days of walking through the, you know, the wild jungle of the Amazon and then more boat rides until you arrive at the first village. And uh, I really consider it a privilege to be asked to, to be their friend, right? And, and they would trust me. Um, I go with a, no agenda as far as like wanting something out of it, except just the joy of, of being an answer to their, their prayer and bringing a solution for what they need. So I'll be leaving in about a little over a month. And, you know, another, so I, I run into a lot of obstacles along the way and I won't go into them, but um, there's always bumps in the road and there's always frustration, but there's always friends to pray with and to talk to and share your, your, you know, discouragement. And they just kind of build you up and keep you going. And of course, I'm not going to stop until I get it done, but it's so neat when God brings a team of people together in your life. And it's a different team for everything. You can't get on the same people each time. And uh, I always want to say, it's, again, I reiterate to you each time we speak, this is not a one-man show. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people, um, friends, family that contributed even uh, to this project and supported me along the way. The other thing that's come up that I'm super excited about is that I really wanted to, you know, document this and film this, but I wasn't about to ask the chiefs if I could you know, bring someone to film it because this is their whole life is to, to live in privacy and to be like there. So they, they don't want to go public, right? With their lives and where they live and they want to continue like they are, which I think is phenomenal. I mean, I can't wait to be there. <laughs> no electricity, nothing, right? Just just nature and me and God, right? It's gonna be beautiful people. Uh, and so I didn't ask and I received a text message about three days ago from the head chief of all the chiefs the chief of chiefs. <laughs> and uh, he said, would it be possible if you could bring someone along to accompany you, you know, a, a, a filmmaker? Uh, we really would like to take pictures and film this and record this historic uh, adventure in the Amazon because it's the first ever. And so number one, the doors open for me to bring someone, which I know no one in the film business. <laughs> That's a, it's always like that. It's always uh, God gives you the next step and then you're like, I'm lost. I don't even know where to start. What do I do? <laughs> Who do I ask? Because the, their main request was we want someone to come that has the right heart and, and the vision uh, for what we're doing and can handle the ruggedness, physical ruggedness of the trip. It's, you know, heavy equipment for them to carry through very, very difficult uh, terrain. So. Um, I can recommend you somebody. Okay, I, I have I have someone that uh, that uh, you know called me last night, a uh, friend of a friend and another I've never met them before, and you know uh, it's it, it's all coming together. Uh, I didn't you know we didn't agree, but we just agreed to pray. <laughs> like, what is are you the, are you the person? Uh, so you know I, I I do know people that have reached out to me in the past with some of the things I've done with Afghanistan, Disney, people like that to you know that have asked to do documentaries on some of the things, but I want to make sure on this one that I really have creative control in protection of these people uh, yeah. so they don't feel violated. So that's why I feel like it's really, really important that I find the right person. So that's uh, this, this is what's happening. And um, I look forward to speaking to you about this when it's complete. I normally don't like to talk about projects until uh, you know, I've actually done it. I don't want to talk about it. I want to do it and then show show someone. But I just am beside myself with enthusiasm. <laughs> and uh, I because because after those twenty tribes are visited, there's 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 several more. And this is the largest. This first group is the largest group of primitive tribes as far as acres of land in the entire Amazon rainforest. So this is covering a lot of territory. Um, and I'm just thrilled that it ended up you know, as a, as a 
gift in my lap, I feel like, uh, to do this. So I'll be putting on my tennis shoes and I'm glad I'm, I, I run every day because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to sleep on the ground. And I've done that a lot. Slept, you know, slept under mosquito nets and lived, lived like that. You know, I grew up like that somewhat. So this is what I love more than dresses and heels. <laughs> I love it so much. But you know what's interesting? <clears throat> and I'm so ap appreciative of you sharing and the pictures, like all of all of that very um, intimate, right? Insights into yes. their lives. And I think it's remarkable. Um, because, you know, the fact that you shared when you went to Starlink, right? And you showed the picture there of you standing in front, you know, just coming in, that led you to this project, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think it's important that, that you share because you don't know where that's going to lead, right? Yeah. Yes. Because, because now you are, you know, if you want, like, God is recognizing, okay, Allison is the yes woman. <laughs> so she will say yes. Everybody's going to say, they're going <laughs> to <they're> <laughs> get out of it, but she's going to say yes. So, <clears throat> so it's like you on the radar. And mm -hmm. I do, I see that. I, I don't have to believe that. I can see when people are, mm -hmm saying yes to something and they're doing something more opportunities come right and i think it, it's good it's like uh in our uh, kind of you know co contemporary world right modern world it, it's uh th this is how it opportunities happen right is through sharing information sharing images sharing you know what, what are you up to right so I'm, i i think i and i hope that people are listening and if you need more help and more donations from other tribes, then this is the opportunity, right? I'll let you know. Just for I'll people let you know. And reach and there is a, Allison. She is the. Mm -hmm. She says yes, and so many other mm -hmm. projects we talked, we talked about. I really encourage everybody to listen to other interviews we did. Um, some remarkable projects and how people really recognize that they can speak with you and that you will really work on their behalf and you will do that very very hard very difficult work as to you know save people help people i think it's amazing and, and honestly it's probably hard to believe this but i'm really shy and i didn't ever have social media till my daughter sat me down one time and said mom you're opening a facebook account I was like what's that and she's like you need to put things out there because it will inspire people uh, I'm shy. I don't like recognition. Every time you get recognition, like fame is a double-edged sword because people then start like, you know, attacking you and hurting your feelings. And you're thinking, I didn't do, I didn't do this work. <laughs> if I wanted to be famous, I would have hired a PR firm a long time ago. Okay. I would have, uh, you know, hired professionals, but I prefer just to kind of do it and crawl back in my, in my cave with God and see what's next. And, uh, but he's shining his light so bright for all the world to see that he is good through people. And, and I have the privilege of him actually using me, <laughs> which I never thought he could. And I just want people to know that he's good. He's nice. He's for you. He's not the bad guy. We always immediately, when something bad happens, we think, oh, God did this, but he didn't. Um, he was there with us the whole time to rescue us and pick us up and, and to make us, make us a fierce lioness again. Or fierce lion in on the in the heart, um, and he is a friend that you can count on, and he will never let you down if you stick with him. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Well, I want to encourage everybody to connect with Allison on LinkedIn, right? On uh, obviously, uh, she has a website. So you can contact her if you need, if you want to help, if you want to participate in any of her projects and uh, contribute, because we know that that's always welcome, right? Because yeah, I want to say that I've had a nonprofit for over twenty years, and every and I made a decision when I opened that nonprofit that not a penny of the money donated would go towards office expenses or salaries whatsoever, yeah. none. And I have a business that actually 100% feeds that nonprofit so that all, you know, it's constantly fed with, with uh, all that overhead, all that expense. And uh, so if someone gives a, you know, $100 or $500 or $5 towards, uh, let's say the Amazon rainforest tribes and more, more satellites, uh, SpaceX satellites for them, 100% um, goes to them. 
it's not kept for my travel expenses or anything. Um, I want it to be pure giving, you know, like if someone gives it, I want it hundred percent to know, they know that hundred percent of it went straight to the person they asked me to send it to. And so I'm just a, a channel for, for, you know, sending money changes people's lives, really suffering. It does a lot. I know it made a difference for me when I just got a paycheck back when I was a mom. <laughs> so Amazing. Yeah. And, isn't it, and isn't it a blessing to be a part of that, right? To be a part yes. of you, right? It's a, isn't it a blessing? So yes. I encourage everybody to, um, so how can we, I wonder, is it possible if you give me that link and then I will put it in the article? Under I will, I'm so shy even about people giving something that I don't even have anything where you can click and give. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, you're not your nonprofit. Yeah. So t basically, but, but, but I should be. I should be. I you should, should change. Be. I need to change my uh, change my ways. Yeah. Actually. Well, I <laughs> hope somewhere maybe on your website that people can find you, or they can contact you directly and can you on LinkedIn and then ask you how to do it. And mm -hmm. I encourage everybody to do this because I think it's a it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to be part of something really amazing, remarkable. Historic. Yes. Historic. Historic. <laughs> that is, other, otherwise, how would you ever, you know, and so many people wonder, right? And I always think it's these days, it's actually so easy to help others and do those big global projects <laughs> because opportunities are everywhere. I think what you said is that saying yes, right? Having that confidence besides all this. Uh, who am I to do this? Oh, I'm just a small little person. Nobody cares. No, it's just like, go for it. Do it. Yes, you can contribute. Even if, like you said, even if you're not the, oh, I'm not the best qualified. I'm not, it doesn't matter. You have a heart. You have a drive. You say yes. I think just with that, you can find projects that you can participate in. And however you can do it, sometimes it's just a donation, right? Mm -hmm. That is already you know gets you closer to being of service you know having that and living out that higher purpose that we all have we because i i'm convicted that we are not here just for ourselves I'm, i think we all came here to also to do something for others so uh, and there is an opportunity so thank you so much thank you so much for doing all this work for for this amazing <laughs> tribes and of course so many other people so um, I would love for you to share um, a final advice to people. What would you say to somebody who is, who wants to say yes, who wants to be of service, who, who wants to do work in Christ, who wants to just, you know, I call it like unglue from yourself, right? Even though it's hard, maybe life is hard. Maybe, maybe you have no choice as to like you, you can't remain sitting there with yourself it's too lonely it's too painful well so, if if god can if god can use me me uh he can use anybody uh and it's never too late and it and you don't have to you don't start when everything in your life is fixed in fact god takes all the pieces of your life and everything you've been through and he begins to put it all back together again and it begins to make sense. But uh, don't wait. If there's something in your heart, don't wait until you uh, have more money or more peace of mind or better circumstances. Just begin, just start. Because there's always gonna be reasons why people say, oh, you had all those kids because you probably had a lot of money. No, there was none. <laughs> it, just, it just showed up. And uh, God just invades your life sometimes right where you are and gives you something to do. And um, all you have to do is take the first step forward. And as you step out, you'll find out if you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. And if your heart is truly and wanting to please him, he'll be there. And if you're going a little to the right, he'll navigate you back to the middle. If you're going to the left, he'll get you back to the middle. And uh, don't, don't wait to start. Don't wait until you have plenty of money. Just start. And that's the way he is. He is stepping. I love that the the Indiana Jones movie where he has to take the leap of faith. Just Google Indiana Jones leap of faith and watch that little clip on YouTube where he has to step out off of a cliff. It looks like and fall 
forever and ever and die, but yet there's a bridge he can't see. And that's the truth. You take that step out there, God, you'll, you'll land on your feet along the way. And he will evolve you, adapt you, and boy, he will grow beyond anything you can imagine on the inside. But I have a really good friend for several years, and um, his name is Buzz, uh, Buzz Aldrin. And Buzz was the Apollo 11 astronaut that walked on the moon, the second man to walk on the moon. <laughs> and he's a great guy. And his mother's maiden name was Moon. His family was a chaplain in the, air, in, the, in the military, and he really felt like, you know, this is the direction he was supposed to go with his life. So he was an, you know, an engineer, and I think he was aerospace engineering, I'm not too sure, at MIT. And he had an idea that how to dock spacecraft in space before we were even going to space. And he was a graduate of West Point. So combat pilot, you know, very decorated veteran. And he, so he applied for the astronaut program, believing he was gonna be part of that original, you know, original group of guys. And he was actually, if I'm not mistaken, turned down twice. And I was having lunch with him and he was telling me the story a few years ago in California. And he said, you know, I failed, I failed twice and I, I tried again, I tried again. And uh, what they needed at that moment, NASA needed this new, this new organization called NASA needed the knowledge he had to dock spacecraft in space, put two spacecraft together. And they called upon him and he volunteered mm -hmm. his time, which led to him into the astronaut program, which led to you know, him being a historic man. But he, he said to me, if you really want to do something, don't be afraid to do it for free. Just do it. Put yourself out there. Don't worry about the payment. If you've got a roof over your head and you can eat, just, just do what you want to do and you'll, and you'll end up where you need to be. I've never forgotten that. Mm -hmm. And you know, that obviously worked for him. And it's working for me. Yeah, that's, that's a great, absolutely great advice. Yeah, it's the first one. Don't wait until you have all those things you think you need. I wanted to add, don't think until you think you're a better person. <laughs> Please don't start this whole self-improvement therapy. I need to do all of this and then I will be ready for God's work. <laughs> it's, like, no. it's God is, once you started the work, you said you have to step into it and God is going to give you plenty of things to overcome and ma mainly overcome yourself in the process. And it's going to make you a better person. Don't worry about that. Yes, yes. You, know, <laughs> you start the work where you are where you are right now. And the second one is don't be afraid to do it for free. Don't be afraid to volunteer. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and say yes, even though you don't see all those worldly return as mm -hmm. we used to, was taught and used to think about how we do things, right? It's a different kind of investment if you want, right? You everything, are everything in this world starts small. Yeah, a baby starts small. Uh, you know, if you plant corn, a little bitty corn, everything starts. Everything starts small, and you can't be afraid to start small and just water it, feed it. It'll grow, and uh, next thing you know, you may have four or five corn plants coming up, and they're you know different kinds, and uh, you're on your way. But each one will grow at a different rate. But everything starts small, and so there is a Bible verse uh, that says, "Don't." despise the day of small beginnings and everything in my life started small yes yes i love it i love it absolutely love it yeah and the work i, I think often when people think of god's work <laughs> glorious big thing i'm gonna be doing this big thing you know and it's begins with the with very small like when, when we started with that when you helped somebody it wasn't didn't look significant didn't look like anything but that led you and so many times in life right you don't know I think it's just a really shows you about your character I think when you start walking with God is when you inside start changing and your motivations change in life it changes you why you do things in life right and you don't do things because somebody else will see it and, and give gives you a clap but you do it in privacy of your own home. You do it in privacy of your own <clears throat> soul, how you 
think of yourself, how you think of people, that you're going to start doubting yourself less because you're going to be humble. You're not going to be, oh, I'm not good enough. You're going to let it go because if you're a child of God, of course you're qualified. Of course you're worthy. That's it. It's not relevant what you think of yourself anymore, right? I think that's mm -hmm. people confidence. I feel like <clears throat> I know in Russian Orthodox Church that that's something I learned when I was a child that a pride is a biggest sin, and the pride is also when we are putting ourselves down and we're thinking <clears throat> that we're not worthy. It's pride speaking because okay. you know, you're measuring yourself with your own measure. <clears throat> And not measuring yourself as a with God's measures, which is you are infinitely worthy. You're priceless, right? This, this is it. <laughs> You're precious. So, and I think that's could help you as well as to, to start small, start where you at, don't wait to be better, don't wait to have all those things you think you need to have qualifications, money some kind of whatever 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 people say right they need but begin now and begin with small steps so and another thing so i want to encourage people to i started this when i really had nothing i always put aside 10 percent of my income for charitable work uh, okay. to help someone else and i remember sometimes putting aside a dollar at a time i get ten dollars of a sudden one mm -hmm. and always always put aside a little bit of your income for someone else and give it away. And you'll be amazed how many zeros God will add to those, add to your income. If you, if you are dedicated to helping other people, he just really does. Uh, so, you know, don't be afraid to help people in need, uh, orphans, widows, people in ministry work, uh, you know, people that are even, you know, not even like you at all. Uh, I think God's pleased when we use our income to bless others. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a that's a very Christian thing, by the way, is not to think of only of yourself, of, of your own, but you just giving to everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. That's You're so fun to talk to. You're a beautiful person, and uh, I look forward to meeting you in person. I will. You're in Hawaii. I should be there. Yes. Now. <laughs> I know. yes definitely oh my gosh it's in the air so many people telling me when are you doing something in hawaii so we could all come i'm Absolutely. okay okay it's in the air so i'm 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 listening i'm listening the only thing better than talking to you like this is to talk to you side by side on the podcast <laughs> that would be wonderful well thank you so much allison so i'm sure that's not going to be the last time because of course when, when you're going in a month mm -hmm. So wishing you all the best on your trip. And of course, this is the testament to the small things, unglorious things, is because when you're going to be traveling, that's the tri trivialities of traveling without internet, electricity, or anything. That's going to be tough. And my, I know hair, my hair is going to be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, we talked about the, that, you you know, the, the training, the, the body, like you have to physically be fit to, <laughs> to actually do it. It's amazing. So... It's all it's all comes together, right? So I feel like it's so important to just in case to be fit and be ready all the time because you you never know where the God puts you yeah. and just just already be be a lot, be like be on the ball, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. So thank we're you. gonna we're gonna discuss that once you came back and and show people hopefully some pictures. Okay. And if you, I do have some really really amazing team I worked with for videos and. Um, photographs who are world travelers extremely good people so okay. and they, so if you need them i'll definitely connect you please so, do sending uh, sending yeah. everybody lots of love and of course connect with us on the school of inspired life and with allison on via linkedin or her website thank you for